Hello guys, my name is Alex and I'm glad you're here. In last video we learned how to make levels and then I took some time and created some water level. I like this level, it feels nice. The only problem is there is not much mechanics yet, so we're gonna make traps here. So in this video we're gonna make a couple of traps here, alright? So it will be more difficult to beat. And I wanna say that my channel is better state than I expect it to be. I have views, I have subscribers, and that is with no advertisement whatsoever. So if you don't mind to support me, please subscribe give me a like and don't forget to ask your questions in the comments below. If you need to know something, just ask me and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. Okay, now the first step will be very easy and actually making traps is very easy. We're gonna go to graphics folder, find traps folder and let's begin with simple one. Let's go and take this spikes. We have a sprite here, just one. Let's drag it to the scene like that and we can name it as a trap spike sorting layer we can set to trap and we see it's very small because of the pixel units i guess so let's select it and change pixel per unit from 100 to 16. hit apply and now it's there and we can see it all right so how you can make trap work very simple just simple script on trigger enter if you have some experience, you probably know how to do it. If you don't have it, just watch and we'll make it together. Let's create a C-sharp script. I'm going to name it trap. And then we're going to select trap spike and just drag trap over here and open it. Now, there is two ways of detecting collision between two objects. There is on trigger enter and there is on collision enter. This time we're going to use on trigger enter. I'm going to delete all of this for now and just type on trigger enter to D. This function called when object enters the trigger, collider trigger, and at that moment we get in past collision that got an insight. So we have this collision and we can check this collision for components. And this is what I'm going to do here. Mostly what people would suggest on YouTube is to use a tag. So they would tell you to do something like collision.tag equals equals to a name of a tag, something like player. And there is nothing wrong with that, you can do it. Just because most people do this, I want to show you another way. Instead of comparing tag, we're going to do this. If collision dot get component of a player not equals to null, then we can do something. So in this way, we just check if object that collided has a component of a player. And if it has, then we can do stuff. Very simple, right? Now let's go here and just debug dot log message of a knockback. All right, now we're going back to Unity. And then here we need to add box collider. Make sure it's set to is trigger. And then on zoom in it, we can change size of it to something like, mm, this is okay, I believe. Let's just create a prefab folder over here. Folder, prefab, and we can drag this trap spike over here. Now, whenever you need to place a spike, you can just do this or you can move it here, for example, focus on it with the F letter, then click E to rotate, rotate it to something like this and press W to move it a bit here. And now you have spikes in the wall that player needs to be careful with. Yeah, all right. And maybe one more. I don't know. Here at the bottom. Cool. Now we don't have a health points, we don't have knockback yet. So I want to make that if I hit the trap, the level will be restarted. Let's go to trap script. Uh, we're going to use, we're going to type using Unity Engine Scene Management. And then instead of debug line or just above debug line, we're going to type scene manager, load scene. And in the parentheses should be name of the scene, but we can do this scene manager, get active scene dot name. So it will get name of the active scene and it will pass it to the load scene. And in the end, we'll just reload the scene that we have. Let's try this. So everything works fine until I get the trap on my way and I need to start over. Okay, this will do for now. Now I want to show you how easily we could make another trap with inheritance. Um, 
Let's go to graphics folder, find traps, fire, and take this on sprite over here. Let's name it as uh, trap fire. Now we can create new script, C sharp, trap fire. We're gonna drag it over here, set certain layer to trap and give it a box collider. Make sure it's set to its trigger. And I guess we didn't change pixel per unit, but we can click over here on the sprite. It will find it for us. And let's just change pixel per unit for all of them from 100 to 16. Okay, now we have the trap fire. Let's place it over here, change the collider size. Now we can go to animations folder. Let's create folder for the player animations layer. Let's drag animations over here and then just create new animation controller, trap fire. We can drag it here, go to animation and create new clip. This one will be trap fire on and let's create another one trap fire off cool now let's go to graphics folder find the fire itself drag off sprite to the off animation then select on animation and drag sprites over here we can change sample rate to 15 see how it works works fine in my opinion and then we go to animator select trap fire and we have two animations here what we need to do is to make one boolean bool is working. Cool. Now let's select transition from on to off. Add condition is working false. Exit time and check duration zero. Then from off to on the same but condition should be true all right now we can go to the script of trap fire first what we want to do is to inherit it from trap so now the trap fire will have this code as well and if player will enter the fire he'll get knockback in here we need animator private animator anim and in the start function we type anim get component of animator now we need boolean private bool is working now we need to know how often it will be switched on or switch off so let's make it a serialized field private float pull down and then we need private float pull down timer Let's move it over here. And in the update, we're going to decrease the value of cooldown timer all the time. So cooldown timer minus equals time dot delta time. And time dot delta time allows us to take time in seconds, in seconds between frames. So basically it works like a real time. Now we're going to go here and type if cooldown timer less than zero, then is working will become not is working this works same as we did with the facing right boolean in the player it just works like a switcher and at the same time let's set cooldown timer to cooldown and of course let's go down here and type anim set bool is working to is working all right so what we're doing here we get an animator component in the start function then in the update we're taking float value and we're decreasing it with a time dot delta time so we're decreasing it with a seconds and then when this value gets below zero we switch and is working boolean and then we set in it this value to positive so this code will no longer work until it will become less than zero again and then again we switch in it and set in time to cooldown which is positive value and it goes in cycle just like that and we set boolean of the animator and now if we go to unity set cooldown to let's say two seconds and we can see that fire is off and on Nani? what is going on here all right i did a mistake with the naming you see i did misspell it it should be is working so i'll copy it from here go here and change the name 
save the project and try again and it's going to be fine the only problem is now that it doesn't matter if fire is on or off i'm still getting knockback look fire is off i'll jump in knockback so what i should do here is to make it off for real let's go to trap fire and then to trap and we're going to make this function protected virtual void so now we can override it from inheritance let's go to drop fire select drop fire and click alt enter we're gonna find generate overrides and leave only this on trigger enter to d click ok now we have this base on trigger enter if you select it you can see it's the same code over here and now let's type if is working then we can do this and otherwise it won't work if this boolean will be false then this line of code will be ignored and we won't get any damage no damage all right perfect now we're done with the basic traps here we have fire and a spikes and what i want to do here is just to show you how to pick up items and it's going to be as easy as a trap itself we just go here to graphics folder items fruits find any fruit you like i'll take an apple fruit apple sorting layer pick up let's change pixel unit to 16. now we can see it we need animations of course so animations let's create animator controller fruit apple I see. Or oh, I should write AC here in the end. Drag it here and add animation. Create new clip. Root Apple Idle. All right. Now I'll need to find the sprites. Items. Fruit. Apple. Drag it over here. Make sample rate 15. Now it's animated. It could be faster. Okay, now let's go to assets, create a script, C sharp fruit, item fruit, drag it over here, add a box collider. Collider for this can be a bit bigger than it is because we want player to pick up fruits, right? We have no reason to give him hard time is trigger now in the item fruit gonna do the same on trigger enter to d if collision the get component of a player not equals to null then we can do i forgot parentheses over here then we can add some fruits let's go to player all the way up and create public int fruits just that now we can go to fruit script item fruit and type collision dot get component of a player fruits plus plus and save it and that's it now i'll place it here and i'll try to pick it up and actually i'll put some more now huh does it work? Let me fruit one, two, three. Okay, it works, but we forgot to do something. I forgot to do something. Let's go back to script and type here destroy game object. Now, if I enter the fruit, it will be destroyed, and I have plus one on the counter over here. I have fruits, more and more and more, and I collected six apples. I want to tell you guys that I have cool course on how to make Endless Runner and also I'm preparing full course on how to make Platformer. It's going to have a lot of features, a lot of cool mechanics, so stay tuned, subscribe if you don't want to miss it. I miss you and I'll see you next week.